Oh, guys. Oh, boy. Guys, this is what I've got to deal with all the time. Not saying this is a bad thing, but all these keys, every time to move all these out, so we can work on and do what we're gonna be doing today. Yes? I got a haircut. You may ask where we got a haircut? Um, this was Katie and I's doing, because you can't get a haircut right now, so I don't think it looks half bad, but if it does, it was free, so. But, <laughs> what's up guys, and welcome back or to the channel. Today, honestly, we got a lot of stuff to do and it's probably gonna be all over the place. Got a box right there for something that I wanna put in the Hellcat, knock that out super quick. Uh, Chevy, we have to, um, I wanna get these bumpers at least the plastic switched and possibly on. Our Ram looks super clean from our wash the other day. I do really, really enjoy a clean truck. Uh, there still needs to be some things done and touched up on the suspension. I might actually come out here and do like a wheel detailing day too, as you can see, there's some water spots and stuff. Kinda wanna get in here, really clean the spokes, maybe clean the backs off really well. And uh, ceramic, spray them from Jack's Wax, one of their new products. It's a ceramic spray, uh, gives you ceramic coated properties in a spray form. So kind of want to do that as well. Now, quick question for y'all while we're at this. I do want to do 42s on this truck. These are 40, 15, 50, 26 uh, Fury Country Hunter MTs. That was the only size and tire available at the time. Now, I have the opportunity to get a good price on some Nitto uh, trail grapplers. It's not gonna be an immediate thing, but maybe in the near future thing. I don't know if that's gonna take away from the look of this truck. This truck has been, you know, lifted on the Furies forever. I mean, they're great tires, to be honest. They're, I mean, they did take a decent amount of weight, but I can't knock that down for it being 40 inch tire and a 26 inch wheel, but they do ride smooth. They ride pretty quiet for what they are. But I do have the opportunity to get me a set of trail grapplers at a decent price. Um, obviously, these would go for sale after, so any of you could buy them. Uh, there's a whole bunch of meat on them, as you guys can see. They're like hardly even used. Um, still got the factory lines in them. I don't know if the trail grapplers would, I mean, obviously they would change the whole look of this truck, but kind of up in the air on that. Also do want to wash the Hellcat and probably get Katie's truck washed and do a lot of stuff today in general. Um, and hopefully if we can get our bumpers on our front end of the Chevy will be put back together. It's almost too cold to work in this garage because the sun really does like heat it up. It's like 62 outside and like probably like 48 in here just because of the shade. So first things first, a long time ago I put a my two tens in the back of the charger and I had my normal Boss Audio amp. Uh, finally got me some zero gauge to four gauge reducers so I could put them in an amp and I also got me a new amp. Depending on how ambitious we are, if the bumpers need cleared or whatever, we may tackle the bed liner today. I don't know. I told you, I'm all over the place. Also, while I'm opening this amp up for you guys, finding a razor blade and kicking paint caps, thank you all for your support on these videos. Honestly, this quarantine thing does get to my head. Not be able to go anywhere, not be able to do a lot of stuff. So your guys is like constant, like thank you for these videos. Thank you for like this great video content gets better and better. It really does help me like mentally almost. Not being able to do as much and still putting out content. Sometimes I edit these videos and I'm like, are they really gonna like this? So, you know, seeing you guys loving the videos and stuff really does mean a lot. I have a Rockville um, over here. It's just this tower speaker connects the Bluetooth. It's got like two tens or something in it, speakers. Uh, tweeter up here and then I ordered the Rockville. Uh, I think that's a 10 inch sub to match this uh, XR, you know, cable and everything connected. It, it sounds great. And I know this isn't like an Alpine amp, a Kenwood amp. Uh, a JL amp, but uh, had has great success with the Rockville. A lot of people love their Rockville audio equipment. So I got an amp to match my subs, finally. Or not. A 4,000 watt monoblock amplifier from Rockville. Now, I forget how cheap or expensive this was. My subs run four ohms at 500 watts RMS. So that's what I needed. I needed an amp to run that. Make sure you're, you know, your 4,000 watt amp. Cool, it's peak power, but you need what your RMS thing is. So my, my subs run four ohms and 500 watts RMS. So I'm hoping this amp can finally power them for a long amount of time. Cause my boss amp always cuts out and that's like a 1500 watt amp. So I think this will do our trick just fine. 
Finally, I actually thought this was like a thousand watts RMS at four ohms, so let's see how this actually turns out. That's what I did the math. I might actually be wrong on this because I have two subs at 500 watts. I was thinking like, oh, okay, but I missed that it was a one ohm, 1,000 watt, one ohm, 1,000 watt RMS. So let's see how this does when I put it in. Still hoping that <clears throat> this 500 watts RMS, four ohms, both of my subs, does in fact work the way we need it to. I just wanna get this wired up super quick here because I keep driving around with the subs just off and the amp just not on. So kinda of wanna take care of that. Wow, is it warm in here? Ooh, that's nice. Honestly, when I woke up this morning, I did wanna do the mid muffler delete on this, but I feel probably take care of this and the Chevy front end before I do this because getting that nice weather like vibe, like, oh, let's do this and have a, you know, Y'all understand what I'm saying. It's like nice weather, so I want to cut the mufflers off. Here are my two 10 inch JL 10 W3s. They both run 500 watts RMS each. They sound great. They've hit every bass note I've ever heard and they hit like notes that my buddy's 15s, 12s, single 10s just haven't hit. These are the hands down best subs I've like ever heard. In my old black truck, I blew the sub, went to an audio shop and the guy's like, yeah, you know, this this hit everything, do all this stuff and I bought that and since then I bought another one. This is in every, it was in my truck, it was in my Jeep, it was in my Jetta, um, and now it's in here. Here are these reducers because if you could see right here on the amp, they'll slide right in there and you could tighten them down and you won't have the giant zero gauge wire uh, all like mangled up in there. So that's why we have these reducers. And back here is our wiring setup. Not super pretty. Here's my old amp. Just like I said, it was all disconnected and stuff just because this thing just taps out all the time. Gonna run this in here, get it wired up really quick. I kinda wanna mount it to the back of the box. Get it all cleaned up back here so we'll see what we can do. Okay, so these just work like this. You take your little Allen screw out. This will fit in here. Look at how clean that setup is. Um, instead of running just like raw wire, you make it real clean and actually better conduct conductivity like this too. All right, so those are all in. Now we're like mounted and secured. So this is my first time actually running. So this is a monoblock amp, but I had four speaker wires. So I'm running two to that side, two to this side. I'm hoping that will be just fine. The only problem with the Hellcat and subs is, um, it doesn't stay put. It literally doesn't. So I need to find like a mounting system or situation that will hold our subs back, as dumb as that sounds. Every time you floor it in this car, or give it gas, the subs will slide this way. And that's not what you want. Uh, I just touched the ground and the positive together at the beginning of this um, ordeal. So luckily the amp, they sent you a new fuse kit. That's honestly awesome. Here we are. So I'm gonna disconnect those and put that into our new fuse block here. Just like that, guys, we got the all the whole new um, fuse little block put in. Move this out of the way. If we did that correctly, this should be working. All right, guys, all I can tell you is this is like really, really loud. I've never had the right amp to power these subs. Like, it hurts. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that back. It like hurts in here. It's bad. We have it all, you know, tuned and whatnot now, but I see biggest mistakes ever for people is one, they don't tune it at the volume they'll normally listen it to, and they're also tune it with this bass knob all the way like up or like flat um, in your car, especially when you're using a line output converter like I am. What this is saying is, you know, pushing whatever subs you have at that volume, which means this volume is what your door speakers are pushing. So if you crank that all the way up and you turn this all the way up when you're jamming, your door speakers will like crackle and pop and not sound good. So that's why I always tune my subs, my amp um, back there. I always tune it with the audio at the level um, 
you'll probably listen to it with windows down and cruising so it sounds good and you'll also tune it with this all the way down which means the bass in your door speakers is all the way down therefore you can crank this louder not get any crackle not blow your door speakers out and pretty much all your bass is being pushed through your subs uh, honestly this amp 4000 watt pushing these two tens i have both like oh, pretty much the gain is all the way down and like the input level is just a hair up and this thing thumps i've never had the right like amp to like supply these subs so super happy how this turned out uh, just a little tip yeah tune your stuff all the way down when using a line output converter you don't want that like really high your subs are like tuned with your door speakers blowing out you, you don't want that use your subs to give you the bass you want let your door speakers use the upper two channels not the third just let you know let your subs do all the work however back here we got a super clean install um for once actually amp is secured that's not going to move i do need to get some kind of like uh bracket from home depot mount it there and drill it into the box here gas that this will like hold so i probably need to get like two or three brackets just kind of like mount it to the metal underneath here mount it to there and like all the way down work my way because i know this is going to end up sliding however i did find my 10 millimeter socket in the trunk of my car that i've been missing for like months so that's awesome these are some wide tires, however, the 295s are also quite wide. Um, like I said, once they're off the vehicle, you'll probably be able to tell a little bit better uh, how much wider these are. But another thing I noticed, for the longest time, uh, the muffler delete kit I had said round mufflers. And under here, what you guys can see is those are, I mean, I've seen pretty much every Hellcat come with round mufflers. For some reason, not this one. This one for some reason has the oval mufflers so i ordered an oval muffler delete kit because i have a round muffler delete kit at the moment as you can see here here's like the cats down here and this mid pipe first here um cuts into the uh oval muffler so we'll end up cutting those out so the uh oval muffler kit will give us that bend and allow us to delete those but i got anxious and i kind of want to get underneath there and take care of that today but uh me finding out that i have the wrong kit is one hindrance too uh i was looking at like race ramps or something to get this car off the ground this is pretty much their smallest lift i guess for their race ramps this is about eight inches that would be pretty darn close pretty darn tight in there to get underneath there and do any work so i might actually make some ramps uh that might benefit me more because I, I honestly that's not that tall to get underneath there with the sawzall and everything else to take care of this i really don't want to do that uh, with only eight inches of like rear lift like that so i might make my own ramps because like the 10 inch lift race ramps are one five hundred dollars two like five weeks of production so not going to deal with that so we got the correct mid muffler delete kit on the way should be here friday and how like ambitious we are may make some ramps before then and honestly just waiting on my wheels so we can get these tires mounted we took our front bumper out of the box honestly it looks super great uh it's powder coated black already uh, some water spots on it from it being wet honestly wish it was like powdered ink black or gloss black but it's kind of a satin ish black i'm not gonna change this i'm not gonna clear coat it um i mean it's powder coated it's good to go we're gonna put it on the truck like this this one's gonna be a pain there's a lot of plastic tabs on this bumper so we're gonna have a heck heck of a time trying to uh get this all transferred over as you can see the bottom plastic is that tannish plastic and the top is the black um i did see a truck online the other day that had it was a red truck i think just searching these bumpers factory plastics and it doesn't look as bad as you think i know you're looking at there you're gonna put that yeah it does not look as bad as you think yes the cool like the awesome like painted plastics would look sweet for this truck i think we'll be okay with the black bumpers and the factory plastic so uh i'm gonna try my best and get at it absolutely ridiculous um it's like a three-part plug to get these things out this goes in the bumper then this goes in to the plug that you put in the bumper and then this goes into the plug that you put into the plug that went into the bumper it's like a three-part plug so ridiculous that was kind of one of the reasons why i took forever to do these plastics and these bumpers because i knew it was going to be a pain in the butt uh that's ridiculous i don't know this might be a little different almost because there's like these here interesting trying to figure out the crossover between this and this bumper here 
Okay, so upon further inspection here, this bumper here obviously is for the truck. Came off the truck, has these brackets, all this stuff. This doesn't fit. It does not line up. It's not the right, just whatever. This doesn't line up. This doesn't line up. Nowhere to put the old brackets and get everything mounted in here. Uh, so, mm, this is absolutely the wrong bumper for this truck. The eBay ad said, oh, like zero, zero to 2006 Silverado Tahoe and Suburban. Well, not Silverado. It's only zero, like 2000 to 2002, this bumper fits um, Silverados. So, it looks really good. Honestly, the um, bumper looks great being black, um, factory plastic, like, ah. Uh, because that just changes my whole thing. I was honestly going to slap the plastics on, put the bumper on, and be done. But the problem is now, what, like almost what do I do? Do I paint this chrome bumper black? Do I paint this chrome bumper purple? And if I paint this chrome bumper purple, that means I gotta do the back bumper purple. But if I wanna paint it black, I gotta order a black paint. And almost regardless, I'm gonna have to paint the back bumper too. So if I'm, cause it's not gonna match. So do I paint the black, do I paint the bumpers black, the same black, I might have to, Ugh. I don't know, this is, this is getting to the point where I just almost get just a hair frustrated because now I'm going to have to order paint, wait a couple days for it to come in and then paint whatever. Ugh. Honestly, um, mm, I don't know. Honestly, don't know, guys. Oh, looking online really quick here, I found this um, powder-coated black front bumper, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. $106. Um, and it fits a 2003 to 2005 Silverado 1500 LS LT base, all engines across the board. Next thing is getting this bumper here and shipped in time. Um, shipped and actually like, because all the delays now, I'm hoping these people are working. I'm gonna try and order it, see if it ships like that. Uh, I might just have to eat this bumper. I also have a bedside in there. So if anyone's got this truck and you need a front, like a O. Oh, 2000 2002 bumper i've got it it's black and i've got a bedside for an eight foot bed inside like a full one but just like the bottom portion i'll show you guys that another time oh i put the grill on just to see it's not actually on it does really complete the front end and it does look pretty darn good on there to be honest i definitely needs cleaned up and sanded and whatever polished i uh, got to come out here in the morning and try and do this bumper. I'll probably take it out of the box right now and get us all set up in here. Guys, literally just telling you, like, build process. Stuff doesn't always go as planned. Stuff happens, and it's just frustrating. Things like this happen. It really is. Uh, but we're going to deal with it. We're going to swap. That's my fault for not, like, quadruple checking everything, um, even though it says all the years. Only a couple years of Silverado, so... Um, my fault, my fault on that. Taking the upper plastic off this bumper. I'll get these brackets off probably when the new bumper comes. Uh, I did get it ordered though, so both plastics are there and this rear bumper, man, is this in some bad shape. Um, however, this bumper does not have the brackets and the brackets are the expensive part for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, these bolts, the only bolt that's really gonna give me trouble is in here, it's quite rusty. So worst comes to worst, we have to cut two bolts off and we'll figure it out from there. Gonna tidy all this up in the morning. Hopefully, it'll be all stellar and good to go. <laughs> next morning we're gonna try and remove all of our brackets off this bumper get them all switched over to our black one like I said unfortunately not the best situation but we're gonna have to make do with it so let's go for that we got everything off as you can see the variety of tools this is taking because this is honestly a pain in the butt it just is. So this bolt right here, what we're dealing with now, is 
Um, the threads and everything, it just, the bolt head is so rusty. So much crap is just like on it. My socket, well, one well, doesn't go on. The 16 mil doesn't go on either. The 17 mil goes on but slips. This is a 15 mil nut. But then I still can't get the 16 on. I still can't hammer a hammer in here. It's like rounded out already. So honestly, I honestly feel like our best bet here is to grind this off and find a new bolt to supply it uh, or to tighten it in our new bumper. So after that semi, semi nightmare, we have our rear bumper put together. Uh, once it's on the, there we go. There we go. I was gonna say once I get it on the truck, I can really hammer these down, step on them, pound all the plastic in, but we should be good now. Wow, what do you know? This bumper is not on. You wanna know why? Because this is a truck full of stupid, 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 stupid designs. Everything from the fenders and everything's attached to them. The freaking rocker panels where just dirt can enter them like th this. They thought this was gonna protect everything in this rocker panel. This little foam piece, no. So. Rocker panels are stupid. What else is stupid on this truck? Hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of stupid things on this truck and one of them is how this bumper is attached. My goodness. So I took the bumper off when the bed was off the truck. I honestly, that's just what I did. Now I'm having such a trouble trying to get the bumpers back on because of one, the hitch, two, the bed. As you can see, we're chipping paint here. Not that this part of the truck matters. I'll probably get Rhino lined anyway, but the bumper doesn't fit in here and it splits the frame too. It also splits the frame. So both ends that go around the frame, uh, but it doesn't fit in here. It hits the hitch. Uh, same thing on that side. It doesn't fit. Me being frustrated so much and just, just done. I know people in the comments be like, do it the right way. You know what? Only the essential people can be working right now. Guess what? Only the essential metal is left on this bumper. Any of the excess little fancy like grooves and dips and like excess metal that got in the way, well, it's gone now. Ha ha, guys, look at us. Our bumper's on. If you know something funny here, what do we got working over here? Plugged in my um, license plate lights and this one wasn't working and it's like an LED obviously so I flipped the polarity and that didn't work. And then I went under the hood and I was like, all right, what's wrong with this tail light? Why does the other one run and this one doesn't? Well, turns out we had a burnt out fuse here. I don't know why. I'm gonna sit here and put a new 10 amp in there and both of our rears should work. Still confused at why this, that one just might be a bad bulb of why this does not light up. I don't know on this one. I mean, the filament looks okay. So just kind of confused on that, that one. I don't know why this doesn't work still. There, now all of our rear should work and maybe it's like a full circuit for some reason that brings it back to the front. Who knows? Let's reset this because it timed out on us. I hope I heard the relays click on. Oh, okay, perfect. Bingo, 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 and bingo. Whew. Your 
we're pretty much waiting on here is our front bumper. When our new front bumper comes, we can put that together, put that on. Other than that, our truck is looking sharp. We got our license plate lights working, tail lights, running lights on both sides, looking great. Threw our spoiler up here just, you know, to get the vision all going on. I'm gonna make a, uh, I honestly had silver vinyl here so I can do the Chevrolet across the tailgate, but um, I think I'm gonna have to go with matte black vinyl for the Chevrolet and get that on there. Other than that, we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna see if I can do a tinted purple bed liner on this, see how much paint I need to tint the uh, liner. It only takes like this much paint for sure. I'll get this uh, uh, all done up purple. Uh, yeah, I got some stuff coming today to for me to get that, check out all my spark plugs, make sure the gaps are right. I'm gonna get some map sensor cleaner, clear that so we can clear up our check engine light. Uh, other than that, we're probably gonna get our mirrors leveled this week, the bed liner, like I said, and probably our little three inch lift kit done on this truck gonna knock all that stuff out this week and we will have almost a completed truck until our bumpers show up with this look and the spoiler on this truck i think i need to run mud tires almost i'm like partially there i really like the way this looks and i feel like mud tires will complete the look i don't know guys <laughs> but we should be getting closer and closer to finish this, this thing up. Honestly, I wouldn't even say maybe a week, maybe two max uh, left on this. After you know our bumper shows up, we're just gonna be waiting on wheels and tires really for this guy, so. Coming along, she's looking great. Love how the rear end came together with our black bumper. So much better than the rusty POS we had. Uh, I tell you that, man. This one isn't in as bad of shape. The reason why I haven't thrown that one out yet is because worst comes to worst, that other bumper just say won't ship for like a month. I can always get that thing painted or powder coated. Yeah, this thing was just in bad shape. I mean, it just rusted through. So I had no option on this guy. Um, that's for sure. So it's starting to rain. Hope you guys are enjoying this build, enjoyed this video. If you have been here before, please get down there, click subscribe, shoot this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We'll be knocking out a bunch more stuff on this truck this week, and I will see you guys very soon.